Hi, Jessica Rabe here, one of the co-founders of DataTrek Research. And at DataTrek, we use a lot of off-the-grid economic and stock market indicators to get an edge over analysis that just focuses on traditional data sets. For today's video, I'm going to show you how we use Google Trends. This is one of our favorite big data tools to analyze a wide range of topics. Google Trends is simple to use and very useful since it allows you to see how many people have searched for any word or phrase on the search engine over time. It even tells you where they live down to a specific area anywhere in the world. There are two reasons why Google Trends is a powerful analytical tool. Number one, search volumes are a crowdsourced indicator of broad social attention on specific topics. That's because Google is the most common place people go to search for information online. Second, we think Google searches are a better indicator of human behavior and thoughts than surveys or other ways of measuring how people think about a given topic. People may lie on surveys or to friends, especially if a topic is touchy, but they often reveal their true thoughts when Googling things they are interested in. So with that said, I'm going to walk us through eight examples that touch on three categories, the state of the U.S. labor market, the strength of the U.S. consumer, and retail investor sentiment relative to U.S. equities and Bitcoin. Let's start by looking at two of the Google Trends data sets we use to help us assess the strength of the U.S. labor market. Here's a chart of U.S. Google search volumes for ask for a raise over the last five years. I have four points here. First, as you can see towards the left side of the chart, U.S. Google searches for ask for a raise declined when pa the pandemic struck in March 2020, given lots of economic uncertainty at the time. But as the U.S. economy and labor market strengthened from lots of fiscal and monetary stimulus, searches trended higher, as shown in the middle of the chart. Second, the peak in searches for ask for a raise happened in June 2022, shortly after average hourly earnings hit a post-pandemic high of 5.9% annualized growth in March 2022. Third, searches have trended lower uh, since then, reflecting American workers' waning confidence in their ability to demand higher pay. Average hourly earnings have also fallen steadily over this time frame, coming in at 4.1% annualized growth just last month. Fourth and lastly, even though search interest in Ask for a Raise has fallen since the highs, it's still up 25% this year compared to 2019. This fits with the official government data, which shows that average hourly earnings growth still exceeds pre-pandemic levels, up 4.1% annualized growth versus the average of up 3.3% annualized growth in 2019. Overall, this chart reflects good news in terms of inflationary pressures, since searches for ask for a raise and wage growth are coming down from 2022's structurally high levels. The bad news, however, is that both remain higher than pre-pandemic levels. As a result, and we've been writing in our daily market newsletter for many months now, the Fed will want to keep cooling the U.S. economy with higher for longer interest rates so that workers feel that their bargaining power is further diminishing due to slower economic growth. We've seen this play out over the last week, and markets have reduced the number of Fed rate cuts expected this year. Next up, here are U.S. Google search volumes for remote work over the last five years. Two points here. First, search volumes for re remote work spiked after lockdowns in March 2020 for obvious reasons and stayed above pre-pandemic levels in 2020 and 2021 amid restrictions related to the public health crisis. Second, searches then took another step function higher at the start of 2022 and have remained structurally elevated since. I have two takeaways from this chart. The first is that Americans continue to feel secure enough in their current or future employment to push for remote work. That's also shown by still low U.S. Off office occupancy at around 50% versus over 95% pre-pandemic, even four years after lockdowns. 
The second is that we continue to believe the real tell about the trajectory of U of the U.S. economy likely lies in American workers' return to the office. If a recession is close, we should see office occupancy turn meaningfully higher as employees trade remote work for job security. But given Americans' ongoing strong interest in job flexibility, that turning point is still clearly far off. Let's now move on to our second category, using Google Trends to gauge the strength of the U.S. consumer given that people usually search for information before making a purchase. Here's a chart that shows Google search volumes for buy house and buy car since 2004, the start of the time series. These are the two most expensive purchases Americans typically make. So the level of interest here says a lot about how confident Americans feel in their current economic situations. I have three points on what this chart tells us. First, Queries for buy house and buy car were low during the back half of the 2000s, given the Great Recession, but rose steadily throughout the last economic expansion from 2012 to 2019. Second, interest in buying a home and car spiked after lockdowns during the 2020 pandemic crisis as people migrated from cities to the suburbs. Third, searches for buy house and car have been structurally higher than pre-pandemic levels since the pandemic. The upshot here is that more Americans are searching for a house or a car now than even at the end of the last economic expansion in 2019. The suburbanization theme that developed during the pandemic continues to this day, despite much higher interest rates and even as life has normalized again four years after lockdowns. Americans are still clearly confident enough in their financial ability to make significant purchases, otherwise they wouldn't be searching about them so much online. Next, here are U U.S. Google search volumes for restaurant over the last 10 years. Three points here. First, restaurant searches took a step function higher in the back half of the 2010s as the U.S. economy strengthened after the Great Recession. Second, interest initially swooned after pandemic-related lockdowns in 2020, but climbed quickly during 2021 as people looked for activities away from home, but also still cl close to their homes. Third, searches for a restaurant were structurally higher than pre-pandemic levels in 2021 and 2022, with the all-time high in June 2022. While searches have trended lower since then, they are still just as strong as they were right before lockdowns. So this chart tells us that even with still high inflation, consumers are looking to eat out at restaurants just as much as at the end of the last economic expansion when inflation was much lower. Dining out is a discretionary purchase and more expensive than eating at home. So this solid in interest in restaurants also tells us that consumers still feel confident in their economic situations. Eating out is usually one of the first sacrifices consumers make if they are worried about the economy and their finances. Lastly, here are U.S. search volumes for cheap gas over the last five years. Oh, I, have, I have two points here. First, searches for cheap gas peaked in March 2022 after Russia's invasion of Ukraine spiked oil prices. Second, interest fell to five-year lows this past January, but have been increasing modestly since amid rising oil prices from greater geopolitical tensions. Our takeaway from this chart is that even though gas prices have been rising, searches for cheap gas are still low relative to the last five years. In other words, gas prices are not yet increasing quickly and sharply enough for Americans to actively seek out more affordable, more affordable options online to better accommodate their budgets. That's important because the more Americans worry about higher gas prices, the more they pull back on discretionary spending, which of course weighs on economic growth. Let's move on again now to our third and last category, focusing on American interest in the stock market and Bitcoin. I have three charts here. First, here is a five-year chart of U.S. Google search volumes for Dow Jones, shown by, by the blue line, S&P 500, shown by the red line, and stock market, shown by the yellow line. Four points here. 
First, Dow Jones Industrial Average, Average might not be Wall Street's go-to U.S. equity performance benchmark, but it's the most commonly used metric by most Americans to track the U.S. stock market. Over the last five years, there, there have been six times as many U.S. Google searches for Dow Jones as S&P 500, and two times as many searches for Dow Jones as stock market. Second, these terms tend to get the most attention when U.S. stocks have a major pullback, like in March 2020, as shown by the large spikes to the left of the chart. Similarly, searches picked up in June 2022, lining, lining up with the first major low in U.S. equities that year. Third, search volumes were also elevated in 2020 and early 2021 amid the pandemic-driven speculative tech bubble, when there was an influx of retail traders after they received stimulus money. Fourth and lastly, interest fell throughout 2023 and this year as U.S. equities rallied. But even with the recent sell-off, searches are around five-year lows. So the takeaway here is that the latest rough patch for U.S. equities hasn't been dramatic enough to catch most Americans' attention. That's good news because stock market interest tends to build as U.S. equities swoon, which can affect Americans' propensity to spend. Next, here's a chart that shows U.S. Google search volumes of value stock shown by the blue line and growth stock shown by the red line over the last five years. Three points here. First, even though Americans consistently show more interest in value stock, the related queries over the last year include some growth stocks like SMCI. Second, and tellingly, searches for value stock and growth stock hit their five-year highs in January and February 2021, when many speculative tech stocks peaked. Third, interest in both terms tend to pick up into mid-April, likely as Americans try to max out their retirement contributions ahead of tax day. So the bottom line here is that Americans have been almost twice as interested in value versus growth stocks over the last five years. That said, Main Street has a very different ideas about what makes a stock growth or value. Nevertheless, attention on either sort of investment is not unusually elevated for this time of year and does not signal retail investor mania like in early 2021. Lastly, here is a chart that shows worldwide Google search volumes for Bitcoin versus ChatGPT over the last five years. Three points here. First, OpenAI launched ChatGPT at the end of November 2022, and search volumes for this tool match those for Bitcoin within just a couple of weeks. Searches for ChatGPT have exceeded those for Bitcoin by a wide margin since January 2023. Second, global searches for ChatGPT just made a new high, only 3% off the all-time high in Bitcoin in May 2021, two months after its price hit 60000 for the first time. The growth in search interest for ChatGPT has been fast and much more stable. Global searches for Bitcoin have picked up somewhat this year amid the SEC's ETF approval and as it's rallied, but it's nowhere near the, the, near the, near the highs last seen in uh, 2021. Third, over the last 90 days, the countries with the highest relative level of search volumes for ChatGPT are Philippines, Taiwan, Bangladesh, Morocco, and Kenya. The U.S. is 36 on the list. For Bitcoin, there are Slovenia, Ch Czech Republic, Slovakia, Switzerland, and Finland. The U.S. is 27th on the list here. So the upshot here is that global search volumes for ChatGPT have far surpassed Bitcoin for nearly the entire time since the chatbot was launched at the end of 2022. Over the last year, there have been three times as many searches for ChatGPT versus Bitcoin. We think ChatGPT's continued ability to hold outsized, outsized attention is an encouraging sign, given that the success of any disruptive technology relies on new adoption. Gen AI is the latest disruptive innovation to spark rapid interest and mass usage. Um, and the last time a technology's popularity grew this quickly was virtual currencies during the pandemic, which also had the added tailwind of massive government and monetary stimulus. 
Ultimately, ChatGPT has much broader applications than Bitcoin, so its appeal is more universal and steady, while popular focus on Bitcoin is typically correlated with price. To wrap up, Google Trends is a very useful tool to gauge everything from U.S. worker and consumer confidence to retail investor sentiment in real time. It's helped inform some of our best calls, most recently the strength of the U.S. economy and labor market, meaning the Fed and markets were way too aggressive about rate cuts this year. With that, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Please hit the like and subscribe button to our YouTube channel if you enjoyed it. And be sure to check out our website, datatrekresearch.com, for a free trial to our daily reports on markets, data, and disruption. There's no credit card or personal information required. You just have to drop an email in. Thanks again for watching, and we hope you have a great day.